we haven't moved any to Bitcoin. <laughs> My, well, the truth is I don't know anything about it. I'm, that, that doesn't always stop me from talking about things, but it will in this case. The stock market's going to advance over time. American businesses are going to be worth more money. Now, dollars are going to be worth less, uh, so that money won't buy you quite as much. But you're, you're going to be a lot better off uh, owning productive assets over the next 50 years uh, than you will be owning pieces of paper or I'm going to throw in bitcoins. <laughs> ah, you know, I've been meaning to ask you your opinion on bitcoin. What do you think of it? I, 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 it's not a currency. I mean, it, it, you know, it, 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 it does not meet the test of a currency. It, 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 uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not around in 10 or 20 years. Why does it not meet the definition of a currency? Well, because people say, well, I'll sell you goods in bitcoins, but they change the price of those every time the price of the dollar changes in relation to the bitcoin. They're pricing off the dollar. They could say, well, I'll sell it to you in barrels of oil, but if they ch every time the price of oil changes, they change the number of barrels you have to have. That's not, your, your oil is not the currency. Yeah, but the yuan does that, too, and people still look at that as a potential currency. Which one? The yuan, the Chinese yuan. Well, yeah, well, it, it is a currency, but, yeah. but it is not a... It is not, it is not a... Uh, it, it is not a durable means of exchange. It's not a store of value. It's, uh, and you said yourself you wouldn't be surprised if it's not around in 10 years? I would not be surprised. I don't know that. But, uh, but uh, it, it's interesting to me. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's been a speculative, a very speculative, uh, you know, kind of Buck Rogers type thing. And, and people buy and sell them uh, because they hope they go up or down, just like they did with tulip bulbs a long time ago. <laughs> I was at a conference, the Allen & Company conference in Arizona, the tech conference, and Bitcoin was the big two-syllable word that everybody was talking about and trying to understand. I'm just curious of your thoughts on Stay that. Stay away from it. Stay away from Bitcoin. <laughs> well, it's a mirage, basically. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a method of, of transmitting money. It's a very effective way of transmitting money, and you can do it anonymously and all that. A check is a way of transmitting money, too. Our checks are worth a whole lot of money just because they can transmit money. Our money orders, you can transmit money by money orders. People do it. I hope Bitcoin becomes a better way of doing it, but you can replicate it a bunch of different ways, and it will be. And the idea that it has some huge intrinsic value is just a joke, in my view. That's interesting uh, to, to, to compare it to those things. You, have you thought of that? It's like, yeah, I mean... You, That's what it's doing. It's transmitting. There's money. something that the checks are actually drawn. You're drawing upon something. It's not the... Right, you're transmitting money. Value. It's, yeah, it's, it's dollars on both ends. I mean, legend. from the guy that puts it in. Right. To, yeah. What thing? Isn't it a ledger? It's a ledger, right? It's an electronic yeah. ledger. Yeah. It's a very fast money order. Anonymous. <laughs> wow. Hey, Warren, I've got a question about Bitcoin. You know, Jamie Dimon called it a fraud back in October. You followed up with uh, comments in December saying that you thought it was a mirage. Jamie Dimon yesterday backed away from those comments saying that Bitcoin is a fraud. Have you rethought your position on Bitcoin? And how would you feel if some of your portfolio banks wanted to make a market in Bitcoin, wanted to trade Bitcoin, wanted to make a business out of Bitcoin trading? Yeah, well, we don't we don't tell our the banks and the portfolio of anything about their operation. But in terms of cryptocurrencies, generally, uh, I can say almost with certainty that, that they will come to a bad ending. Now, <laughs> when it happens or how or anything else, I don't know. But I know this. If I could buy long-term puts, if I could buy a five-year put on every one of the cryptocurrencies, I'd be glad to do it. But I would never short a dime's worth. Have because, you thought about you know, trading the futures? Talking, to take a negative position on Bitcoin? No. You would not do that? No. There's no, re there, there's no reason. I, I get into tr enough trouble with things I think I know something about. Why in the world should I take a long or short position in something I don't know anything about? So, uh, you know, we don't have to know what cocoa beans are going to do or, 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 any, or cryptocurrencies. We just have to focus on eight or ten stocks that businesses, basically, that we think are decent businesses. Uh, but I do think that I, I think what's going on definitely will come to a bad ending. I mean, you've got virtually everybody. I, I have a class, I have 11 schools coming on Friday. The questions will be on Bitcoin, and I won't know the answers. <laughs> Although when we sat down, Warren, you did say, I should have announced that we were getting involved in Bitcoin this morning. Well, that is true. I mean, if I, 
to, uh, uh, that, that would be much more interesting <laughs> to the audience that, that we were going to issue a whole series of cryptocurrencies tomorrow. But uh, we aren't, believe me. And we don't own any. We're not short any. We'll never have a position in them. Capitalization of cryptocurrencies approached that of Berkshire and Apple last year. And clearly, the idea behind crypto will affect conventional banking groups, where Berkshire is a shareholder. You always say you didn't go into too much detail to obtain an understanding on cryptocurrencies. So what factors caused you to say that it's a bubble? Well, generally, non-productive assets <clears throat> remain. You know, if you had bought gold at the time of Christ, and you figure the compound rate on it, you know, it's it may be a couple tenths of 1%. Uh, the, it, it, it's, it essentially is not going to deliver anything other than supposed scarcity, you know, because they'll only, you can only mine so many. But so what? I mean, what, is, what does it produce itself? Uh, you know, the check is a wonderful idea. Just imagine how the world would be without being able to write checks or have wire transfer of funds. But it doesn't make the check intrinsically itself worth a lot of money. And if you said you can't use something called check with a little piece of paper, you'd do something else to transfer money. I, I think that any time you buy a non-productive asset, uh, you are counting on somebody else later on to buy a non-productive asset because they think they can sell it to somebody for more money, and it's been tried with tulips, and it's been, try it's been tried with various things over time, and it does come to a bad ending. I like cryptocurrencies a lot less than you do. <laughs> 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 and so, to me, it's just dementia, and I think the people who are professional traders that go into trading cryptocurrencies, it, it's, it's just disgusting. It's like... <laughs> Somebody else is trading turds, and you decide I can't be left out. At one point this weekend, you said that Bitcoin, and this was basically, you were asked, Charlie said Bitcoin's like rat poison. You were asked about that comment, and you said, well, it's probably more like uh, rat poison squared. Uh, Charlie went on in the meeting to then basically call Bitcoin turds. Um, he, he is an expressive sort, isn't he? <laughs> and maybe when he gets a little older, he'll, he'll mature. <laughs> I just want to ask you about that because it sparks so much controversy, and uh, particularly on Twitter and some of the places where you might expect people who are trading in, in cryptocurrency uh, to be pretty um, loud yeah. about what they heard. What, what is it about Bitcoin that gets you guys so fired up? Well, when you buy a farm, uh, you look at the crop every year and and what prices are, and you decide whether it was a satisfactory investment. I mean, you, you look to the asset itself and what it produces for you. When we buy a business, we look at what the business earns and decide how we feel about it in terms of what we paid. But we are buying something that at the end of the period, we not only have what we bought in the first place, but we have something that the asset produced. And when you buy non-productive assets, uh, all you're counting on is whether the next person is going to pay you more because they're even more excited about another next person coming along. But the asset itself is creating nothing. Uh, one of the interesting things, uh, for example, is, is gold. Uh, if you go back to the time of Christ and you look at how many hours of labor you had to give up in order to buy an ounce of gold and you take it forward to now, you'll, you'll find the compound, right, maybe a tenth or two tenths of one percent. You know, and, and, and then you have to insure it during that time and make sure you know, somebody doesn't steal it from you. And but it doesn't produce anything. And uh, productive assets, uh, you, may have, you can pay too much for a productive asset. But I bought a farm in the 1980s, and, and every year, look at how much it produced the way soybeans and corn. And at the end of that period, I've still got the farm, and I've gotten some significant income off of it, apartment house, operating business, but uh, if, if you and I buy various cryptocurrencies, they're not, they're not going to multiply. They're not going to be a bunch of rabbits sitting there in front of us. They're just going to sit there. And I got to hope next time you get more excited after I bought it from you, and then maybe I'll get more excited and buy it from you. And actually, we could, we could sit in the house by ourselves 
and we could keep running up the price between the two of us. But at the end of the time, there's one Bitcoin sitting there, and now we've got to find somebody else. And the, and they come to an end. I mean, those. So, uh, I mean, that's a greater fool theory. That's what you're saying. It, well, yeah, it's 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 buying something because you expect the pool of people who want to buy it because they want to sell it to somebody else will grow. And 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 you know, it, it's wonderful because it does create a rising price does create more buyers and people think I've got to get in on this and and it's better if they don't understand it. That's the other thing about not productive If you don't understand it, you get much more excited than if you understand it. I mean, if you buy a bond that says it's going to pay you 4% a year, you're not going to get any pleasant surprises. <laughs> She's going to pay you 4% a year. But if you, if you, you can have anything you want to imagine if you just look at something and say that's magic. You can do it with shark's teeth or seashells or, or anything. And, uh, you know, they did it with tulips in, in, in the 17th century in, 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 in Amsterdam and... and and they'll do it again. I mean, people, they like to speculate. They like to gamble. And uh, if you can get something, particularly if you have something half plausible going on, mm -hmm. if you had bought gold in 1942 and you say, we might lose the war and we might have to run off to some other country and, you know, so let's put our assets in gold, you would have less than a penny for every dollar you got from owning stocks. Less than a penny. Now, if somebody calls that a store of value, I mean, I think they're delusionary. Okay. Uh, Andrew has a question, too. Andrew. Hey, Warren, related to this uh, issue of Bitcoin, you saw that Goldman Sachs just last week announced that they were going to uh, create a, um, uh, effectively a trading operation around cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin in particular. You've been an investor uh, in Goldman. What do you think of their decision to do that? Well, they probably think that lots of people are going to get very excited about, well, and uh, maybe already are, but they, they think there's money to be made trading them. Uh, I don't think they're expressing an opinion on the ultimate value. I would be very surprised if the top partners of Goldman are, are, are selling their Goldman stock and putting it into Bitcoin. Uh, but I, I want to cover this subject now because my friend Charlie will come on at 8 o'clock and there's no telling what he will say. Well, that, that's my whole entire point. I do want to ask Charlie about it because I think when he talked about the turds, he was referring to this. He, he said, if you're trading this, it's like watching other people trading turds and deciding you want to get a piece of that. Well, you're not going to get me to comment on that. <laughs> Hopefully Charlie's not awake and well, not watching Well, the truth is right people now. do trade on very crazy things over time. Uh, you know, imagine people selling their homes to buy a tulip in Amsterdam. Uh, if people think they're going to make money the next day, and worse yet, if they think somebody else that they know is going to make money and they aren't going to make money, they, it, it, it just draws people in. You know, I, I, I could whisper something on this program, and, and, and kind of the more silly it was, the more it might react, because there's no quantitative limits. If you buy a stock, you say, well, I'll buy it at 15 times earnings, but I won't buy it at 20 times earnings. But when you get into something that doesn't produce anything, you know, there, there's, no, there's no checkpoints. When I was tweeting the things that you and Charlie were saying about this weekend, all I was doing was repeating what you were saying, and people were coming back with some pretty angry comments, well, including yeah. things like, I bought a house uh, buying cryptocurrency. Uh, you're outdated on this. They said a lot meaner things that uh, you don't understand it, so you should shut up about it. What, uh, you're, you're not. Well, the interesting thing is if you're investing, you don't worry about other people. Say, if I'm investing in Apple, I love the idea of people saying Apple is terrible because I want the stock to go down because they're repurchasing shares and my interest will go up faster. You, you don't get defensive if you're buying something that produces that. You don't buy a... F a farm and get real defensive if somebody comes along and says you shouldn't buy a farm or something. You say, look at that. What's the crops grow? And I can see what I sell. I'm selling my crop for at the end and I'm making 4% or 8% on my investment. Uh, you, you get defensive when you, you look at this thing and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> you're just hoping somebody comes along to pay you more tomorrow or the next day. And you're dependent on more people, the mob growing, you know, basically. So, so those people do get angry. But uh, the person that bought a house with it, I would say they did the very right thing. They, they sold, sold it. it. <laughs> they sold it and bought something else with it. Hey, Joe, uh, you have a comment, too? It just, I was singing it. But look how long it took you to buy Apple, though, Warren. I mean, you finally did buy it, but uh, you needed to be, you know, it needed, it just took a long time. I don't know what happens with Bitcoin, but you see, these are, I don't understand it either. But 
uh, it's got quite a following among uh, among uh, uh, all these people that you know think it's going to twenty five thousand or a hundred thousand. I mean, it did take you. You've never embraced uh, technology as much as a lot of other things that you understood a lot better. And you're finally in Apple. But what what, what did you finally buy Apple? It's all right, it, it would, was all right, probably a seven hundred billion dollar company when you finally bought it. You could have you know it would have been nice to buy it at a hundred billion or yeah. fifty billion. Yeah. The nice thing about buying apples, I don't care whether anybody ever mentions <laughs> Apple again. I mean, you know, whereas with Bitcoin, you do people to buy it want to tout it because they want more people to yeah. join the crowd. So they want to come on and say, you buy Bitcoin because the only they're going to lose money unless the crowd gathers, if the crowd starts dispersing. So they've got every reason in the world to tout it. Let me ask you, Charlie, about some comments that you made over the weekend um, that people paid attention to. Um, my Twitter feed lit up when I tweeted about some of them, specifically when you started talking about Bitcoin as turds. What, why, <laughs> I'm surprised that attracted any attention. <laughs> <laughs> why did you equate the two? Well, Bitcoin is worthless artificial gold which, if it succeeded, would facilitate a lot of illicit activity. Now, that is not something I think the world needs. And the fact that it's clever computer science doesn't mean that it should be widely used and that respectable people should encourage other people to speculate in it. Bitcoin reminds me of Oscar Wilde's definition of fox hunting, the pursuit of the uneatable by the unspeakable. Well, that sounds better than what I used before. <laughs> <laughs> we, we asked earlier, Charlie, uh, uh, Andrew brought it up with Warren, but... I think it's a scumball activity. Does that better serve you better? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we asked earlier about Goldman Sachs getting into the business of having a trading desk for Bitcoin. Berkshire Hathaway owns about $2.5 billion of Goldman Sachs. Does it bother you or does it not surprise you? Just Well, I don't expect every investment bank to agree with everything I think. They're, they have a lot of animal spirits in investment banking. Bill, Charlie and Warren have weighed in on Bitcoin. Do you own any? Uh, somebody gave me some for my birthday. Uh, and then a few years later, I thought, hey, I'm going to sell that. So no. Uh, <laughs> There's some really good technology in terms of sharing databases and verifying transactions uh, that is talked about as blockchain. That is a good thing. Bitcoin and ICOs, I agree completely. Uh, it's one of the crazier speculative things where it's not, as, a, as a, an asset class, you're not producing anything. Uh, and so you shouldn't expect it to go up, uh, it's, it's kind of a pure greater fool theory type uh, investment. Um, so, you know, I, I, I agree. I would, I would short it if there was an easy way to do it. We just had a conversation with Charlie Munger about a week and a half ago, and I asked him if he thought the golden era of, of value investing was over. And he said, no, not for forever, but he thinks the game is a lot harder than it used to be. What, what are your thoughts just in terms of looking around, trying to find businesses, trying to find pieces of business versus when you started the game? Well, it's harder for two reasons, one of which is peculiar to us is we just We've got a lot more money, so our universe of possible things to do has shrunk from thousands and thousands of things that I used to look at when I had small amounts of money to relatively few things. Now, See, that, that, that seems to defy logic. I have more money, so I have fewer things I can do. But it's just because a deal, it, it's it going to be much bigger. It doesn't move the needle. needle. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, no, I, there's probably 100 stocks. You know, if we put $5 billion in something and it's 10% of the market cap, which would be as much as it would be, you're talking $50 billion and up market caps. Uh, and, and $5 billion is 1% of our of Berkshire's value. So if it goes up 50%, we make a half a percent, you know, basically on, on, on value before tax, 35 
40 basis points afterwards. I'd love to <laughs> so, have your problems. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, and then the second thing is, I mean, obviously got way more competition than when we started uh, uh, in 19, well, really when I took Ben Graham's class in 1951. I mean, the, the whole world was, was uh, my oyster because people were not going through the manuals and you had to, it's easier to get the data now, for one thing. I mean, just with the internet, far easier. And I used to mail away for annual reports and go to the Interstate Commerce Commission, the Public Utility Commission, the Insurance Commission. I went to all those offices and dug through papers. And, and now it's, you know, it takes five, five seconds for somebody to get the same information. I'll, I'll ask this very fleetingly. Have, has your position changed on Bitcoin? Uh, no, I mean, it's too bad, but, but, but Bitcoin, it, it's ingenious. And blockchain is important, but Bitcoin has no unique value at all. It doesn't produce anything. You can stare at it all day and no little Bitcoins come out or anything like that. It's, it's, it is a, it's, it's, a, it's a delusion, basically. <laughs> so we've gone from rat poison squared to a delusion. Well, it's kind of an could, upgrade. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't Who knows where we'll be next year. But I, I, I'm, I'm really sorry it happens because people get their hopes up that something like that is going to change their lives and it was a very ingenious thing to figure out how to have a limited supply and make it harder to more expensive to create them as you go along and all that sort of thing but it doesn't the function as and, and this is explained to me by people a lot smarter than i am but they say blockchain does not depend on you know, and jp morgan is talking about creating their own you know jpm and and it'll it'll be worth a dollar i mean it's matched to the dollar to dollar and uh it's I, I, I'm, I'm sympathetic to people that own it.